Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today's founder is John Langdon, and while John Langdon had a humongous contribution throughout the American Revolutionary period, we're going to focus today on the Battle of Fort William and Mary. Fort William and Mary was lying just outside Portsmouth, New Hampshire, as things were getting tense between the colonists and Great Britain. John Langdon, by this point, was a 33-year-old man who had made a name for himself not just as a local politician, but as a ship captain and as a merchant, and he had been become pretty wealthy. He was also a leader in the militia. So, when, on December 12th, 1774, that's right, about four months before Lexington and Concord, and just after they started enforcing some of the First Continental Congress's boycott recommendations, well, a young man shows up on horseback. Who's this? Well, none other than Paul Revere. Uh, Paul Revere had many important rides during the Revolutionary Period. This was a midday ride. That's not so famous as his other ride. But Paul Revere shows up giving a powder alarm. And a powder alarm was common at that time. And it was someone showing up, this time Paul Revere, saying, Hey, the British are coming. Although that's not exactly what they said. But essentially, hey, the Roy the Redcoats are coming, and they want our gunpowder. And while there were a lot of reasons tensions had grown between the British and the colonists, the real reason war breaks out is gunpowder. The British were going for arms and gunpowder at Lexington and Concord, and here, four months beforehand, they are coming to Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to take the gunpowder. Now, side note, this ends up not being true. While Thomas Gage in Massachusetts did consider sending soldiers to Portsmouth to take the gunpowder, he didn't actually do so. But, word had spread, and Paul Revere came and brought warning. Now, Langdon gets this warning, and he recruits the militia. He gets about 400 people, and they go up the river, across the river, to Fort William and Mary. It's certainly a mouthful for a name of a fort, but that's what it was called. Langdon leads his men there. The fort is only guarded by six people, but these are six British regulars, and they actually fire on the crowd. Now, no one is hurt with the firing, and the militia storm the fort, these six people, to their credit, they defend themselves with fists. Uh, fortunately, no one's seriously hurt and no one's killed. There are some cuts and bruises because they got punched back a little bit. But uh, John Langdon is able to quickly and easily take this fort. They then take the gunpowder and some of the arms and remove it. The next day, John Sullivan would take some more soldiers across and take the cannons out and some of the more powerful weapons. This is where John Langdon really establishes himself as a leader. Now, Langdon would go on to have a lengthy career. We're not going to get too into it, but he would be a multi-term uh, governor of New Hampshire. He would be a continental congressman. He would be go to the Constitutional Convention and sign the Constitution itself. And then he would be an inaugural member of the United States Senate and would spend the first decade of the American government in the United States Senate. So I don't want to just forget about the rest of his career, but as I said, we are focusing on William and Mary today. It, what's really interesting about this is, as I said, about four months before Lexington and Concord, there's no reason that this should not have been the Lexington and Concord. Uh, Paul Revere comes saying the British are coming. They're coming after gunpowder. The Patriots put their militia together and respond very quickly, and they attack uh, a stronghold of the... British Army. For whatever reason, it was not. Now, I have two theories as to why this might not have carried the weight of Lexington and Concord. First of all, there wasn't any real bloodshed. As I said, there were the six soldiers defending the fort against 400 people. They had no chance at defending it, and though they got smacked around a little bit, there was really no bloodshed. Uh, therefore, no martyrs to the cause, nothing really to celebrate, no shot heard around the world. It frankly, wasn't quite as sexy as uh, Lexington and Concord would be a few months later. Um, additionally, they took the fort and then they left. Eventually, the British come back and just kind of walk back in, uh, as opposed to Lexington and Concord, which leads to the holding of Boston or the cornering of the British soldiers in Boston and a standoff, essentially a hostage situation for over a year. So, or almost a year, just shy of a year. Just to be clear, don't call me out on that. Uh, so that's why this particular battle is largely overlooked compared to Lexington and Concord, which is extremely famous in American history. Uh, but now we've learned a little bit about it. We've learned a little bit about John Langdon and his establishment of a leadership role. Oh, I also forgot to mention when I was listing off the things he would later do, he leads troops 
the Battle of Saratoga. So he ends up also staying with the militia through that part of the fight. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, hit like so more people can learn about the channel. If you're new here, subscribe. I talk about the American Revolution seven days a week, and I'll be back with another founder for you tomorrow.